Well, thank you very much for that introduction. And can I begin by acknowledging the Ngunnawal people, elders past and present and emerging. Can I also extend a very, very warm welcome to Minister Florence Pali. It's wonderful to have you here with us here today. I know you've made a special uh, effort to be here with us today and I think that's a, a mark of the wonderful relationship that's been formed as we've moved to this day. And so thank you so much for making the effort to be here today and, and please pass on uh, my kindest regards to President Macron. This is a day as I was just mentioning to you that he and I uh, have been looking forward to, as we discussed when we were in Buenos Aires not too long ago, to His Excellency Christophe Pernou. Thank you very much for all of your efforts in bringing us to this point today, working so closely. To the Premier of South Australia, Stephen Marshall, it's always good to see your smiling face wherever in Canberra, South Australia. It's wonderful to have Stephen here, such a passionate advocate for this program. To my ministerial colleagues who are joining us, um, today, particularly the Minister for Defence, Christopher Pine. Um, congratulations, Christopher, on your stewardship of this program over a long period of time. And uh, it's wonderful that we can join together with your other ministerial colleagues who are here today uh, to mark this important occasion. This really is a great day for Australia. It's a great day for our Royal Australian Navy. I reckon it's the greatest partnership in Australia and in France since Nancy Wake was let loose on the Nazis in the Second World War. It really is a wonderful partnership. The Australian government regards the safety and security of its people and its territory as our greatest duty and calling. As a land girt by sea, as our national anthem proclaims, a great Australian, Royal Australian Navy is what is necessary. And what that means is ensuring that we're at the front of the pack when it comes to the latest naval vessels and firepower. And as part of our government's plan to keep Australians safe, we're celebrating a milestone today with the next phase of our future submarine program. In 2016, the government selected France and Naval Group as our international partners to deliver a 12 strong fleet of cutting edge submarines as we promised to do. The signing today of the Strategic Partnership Agreement to deliver these submarines underscores the long-standing and strategic partnership between Australia and France. A spirit of defence cooperation and collaboration between our nations reaches right back to the First World War. But this program brings a new depth to that partnership through a multi-decade program to build and sustain these submarines in Australia. It's more than a contract. This is a project that will not only keep Australians safe, but it'll deliver Australian jobs. It will build Australian skills. It'll make and not require Australian steel. And it will mean a stronger Royal Australian Navy. Our government is committed to maximising Australian industry content in the future submarine program. This was a conscious decision of our government. Beyond construction, the program will provide Australia with an independent, sovereign capability to sustain our fleet, including the upskilling of Navy and industry workforces. We'll see long-term strategic cooperation, not only in defence industry, as I know Minister Shobo will be excited about, but across other sectors, creating even more jobs through more high-tech, high-paying jobs. Hundreds of Australians are already employed on the Future Submarines program, and thousands more will be through the supply chain during the construction phase. So as pleased as I know Premier Marshall is about the jobs in South Australia, these jobs reach right across our great continent. The signing of this agreement today demonstrates our government is delivering on our promise on the Naval Shipbuilding Plan. It's a $90 billion commitment to build in total 54 new naval vessels and grow a strong, sustainable and sovereign Australian naval shipbuilding industry. This is a very audacious plan. This is what vision looks like. The number of shipbuilding programs we are launching is beyond 
what just about any other country, including the United States, has done since the Second World War. The number of new starts on these projects is almost without parallel. This is a big project. This is an audacious program that we have set before us and we are committed to achieving it. Twelve attack class submarines will be a cornerstone of that plan and it's all part of Australia's biggest ever peacetime investment in defence. The strategies were laid out in the 2016 Defence White Paper and we're getting on with the job. Over $200 billion is being invested in Australia's Navy, Army and Air Force defence capability over the next decade. With the signing of today's agreement, we are strengthening our region, something I know Minister Payne cares about deeply and is part of her ongoing discussions, not only in the Indo-Pacific region, but all around the world. This is a key part of our participation in creating a safer and more peaceful world. Our region, which we keep secure, in close partnership with our valued allies. So we are delivering for our Navy, our nation and our people as we promised. We are delivering for our defence industry and jobs and we are delivering on our steadfast commitment to keep Australians safe and secure. I conclude by thanking again all of those who have brought us to this point today but I particularly want to commend Ministers Pine and Parley for the wonderful working relationship they've had to bring us to where they are today and uh, look forward to that relationship continuing into the future as we get this done. Thank you. Thank you very much and it's a great pleasure to be here on uh, a truly historic day. Uh, I would like to thank the Prime Minister for his words. He's outlined our ambitions and the project uh, in the broad extremely well and I also thank him for being present today to mark what is a really important occasion in the life of the Navy uh, and the military uh, historically in Australia. I'd also like to thank uh, Minister Florence Parley for coming to Australia to be part of the signing of the Strategic Partnering Agreement. Uh, I know what her schedule is like and it really is a great honour to us that she has made the effort and I'd like to uh, reiterate the Prime Minister's comments that uh, the relationship that uh, the Minister and I have built up over the last uh, few years in defence industry and now defence has been one of the key reasons why uh, we are signing the strategic partnering agreement uh, on budget, on time, uh, that Naval Group has been stood up uh, as a company here in uh, Australia, that the Osborne uh, North Submarine Yard has been had its first sod turned in December. The project is uh, going very well and it's a testament to the relationship between Australia and France, between the Department of Defence and Naval Group, that that's been the case. I'd also like to particularly sing single out uh, Maurice Payne uh, as the Minister for Foreign Affairs because it was Maurice that began uh, this project when she was the Minister for Defence. It was Maurice that managed the competitive evaluation process, uh, which was unique in Australian uh, naval history and delivered such a great outcome for Australia. And I'd also like to single out uh, Minister Chobo because he's even more excited than I am today because the signing of the SPA is the end of my role on a daily basis in terms of managing this project. From today, Steve Chobo has to deliver the project. There's nothing better than making the announcements and handing the delivery to another minister to deliver. That's where it can all go wrong. But I'm sure that won't happen uh, with this project and uh, I'm sure he's very excited about taking on that role. I'm sure the Chief of the Defence Force, the Chief of the Navy, the Secretary of the Department are all very excited about the Prime Minister's uh, speech and the fact that it encapsulates this is the largest defence project in our nation's history, the biggest build-up of our military capability since the Second World War, part of a $200 billion commitment to getting our spending on the military to 2% of GDP by 2020, a year earlier than we promised, and delivering capability and fundamentally, we are changing our strategic industrial base by investing here in Australia. So in conclusion, can I thank those who've been responsible for this in defence. It couldn't have happened without Greg Samet as the head of our team, without the very strong support that he's had within defence from Steve Johnson, from the, the Capabilities Acquisition and Sustainment Group first, Q 
Kim Gillis, now Tony Fraser. The negotiating team, of course, uh, I could go on and thank many other people, but uh, I won't because it's too long a list. It's been a great team effort, and thank you all very much, and I look forward to, to the next phase of the project. Dear Prime Minister, dear Minister of Defence, dear Christopher, Admiral, dear Maurice, dear Hervé Guillou, dear colleagues and friends, it's an honour to be here today. Christopher and I thought it was essential that we give appropriate solemnity to this event. And for sure, its immense importance deserves it as evidenced by your presence, Mr. Prime Minister. Yes, it was hectic to make it here today. Only 24 hours ago, I was in the Near East. It's not exactly sand and death, as some recently said, but there is a lot of sand, for sure. And death is never far when we fight the Islamic State. I flew the long flight to come over here, long hours, sure enough, but less long and less taxing than the 70 days your submariners one day will spend inside the powerful attack submarine. But on those beautiful Australian summer day, it's an occasion to reflect on what we have achieved. And I do so with a feeling of pride, a feeling of gratefulness, and a deep sense of responsibility in front of the challenges ahead. Pride there is, and pride there should be, the strategic partnering agreement and the other documents signed today mean a lot for our two countries. The future submarine program means many things. In military terms, it means that Australia will acquire a world-class capability, truly the best in the world, that will give your Navy an incredible sovereign tool. In strategic terms, it means Australia will have an edge over the entire region. In industrial terms, it means a lot, too. Australia will revive a sovereign naval industrial and technological base to build a 4,000-ton submarine and sustain a fleet of 12 units. Naval Group will develop a unique design with its finest technologies and know-how. The company will implement a production plan resting on an Australian supply chain on the other side of the earth. But this is not only a military project or an industrial project. Behind those masses of dark steel, behind those eyeless beasts, there is a bubble, a friendship a commonality of interests, a vision, a values in the region, a common attachment to democracy, multilateralism, the rules-based order. It takes a lot of confidence for Australia to bet on France, and a lot of confidence, too, for France to share with Australia a capability that is so close to the core of our sovereignty and our strategic autonomy, and the result of immense investments over decades. So when I heard at some point that somewhere whining, somewhere whining about the length of the negotiation, I thought, open your eyes. This is the deal of the century. This is a partnership for century. We were right to take the time necessary to dot all I's and to cross all T's. We want to leave our successors a perfectly sound project. And I believe this is what we will hand over to them. 
All this, of course, did not come without extremely hard work. So today should also be a day of gratefulness. I would like to congratulate also all the actors of the negotiation. Christopher and I, without micromanaging, have been following very closely what happened. And we could take the measure of the commitment on both sides. My special thoughts go to Rear Admiral Greg Summit from the Commonwealth of Australia and Hervé Guillou and Jean-Michel Billig from Naval Group and also to Thierry Carlier from the French Procurement Agency. My friends, you did a great job. Thank you. But now that we have come to the end of the land, it's time to look over the cliff's edge. And one cannot do so without a feeling of awe. How much await us? How much we'll still have to do on both sides to make it happen? For those of you who have visited a naval shipyard, you will see what I mean. Currently in Cherbourg, there is an Australian team working already on the submarine's design. This is the brainy part, but then we will need yards, steel, kilns. We will need cranes and docks. We will need automats, monitors, robots. An entire industry needs to be reshaped for the operation of this project. This will be no mean feat. It will require a lot from Naval Group, but a lot from Australia too. It will create vast opportunities locally, but it will also be an, enorm an enormous challenge. But by joining forces, I trust that we will rise to it. So as, as we embark on this long journey together, I can only say to us all, fair winds and long live the Australian-French partnership. Thank you. Prime Minister, Minister Pali, Minister Pine, Minister Payne, Minister Shobo, uh, the Honourable Christopher uh, Penne, the Ambassador to France and Australia, uh, to Mr Hervé Gilliou from CEO, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, 
are men and women of the Capability Acquisition Statement Group and men and women of the Navy. Thank you all for being here today on this very, very important day. As the Prime Minister, Minister Pine and Minister Parley have all outlined today, the strategic partnering agreement between Defence and Naval Group will govern the delivery of the attack class submarines over the coming decades. Moving forward from today, we will continue to see a strengthening relationship between the men and women of Australia and the navies of France and Australia in a most unique way. The attack class submarines will meet Navy's capability requirements and they will be at the forefront of Australia's defence strategy and will help protect Australia's security and prosperity for decades to come. With their inherent stealth, long-range endurance and formidable striking power, the attack class submarines are a key part of our Navy's future. I thank every people that were involved in getting us to today's very important day of signing this agreement. In particular, Rear Admiral Greg Samet and the team of the Future Submarine Program have worked tirelessly to deliver this outcome. This marks the start of much more work, but work that without this foundation would not be able to go forward. I thank you all for being here today and I thank you for the great work that you've done in getting us here today. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen.